Hello and welcome once again to uh, Let's Play Steambot Chronicles. In today's episode we'll be dealing with the uh, third and final dungeon in the game, the hardest and most inaccessible one. We can't come here until we acquire the waterproof body M naturally because it's in the middle of the lake. Once again I'd like to remind you that you don't have to watch this episode, it's going to be quite repetitive and a bit boring so if you feel like skipping it, go ahead. I'll spoil it right now, I get everything in the dungeon and make a load of money. At the very least you could uh, skip ahead to around 26 minutes in I believe, there's a musical interlude to enjoy and then a summary of what I got. Still with me? Good. Anyway, the uh, Tempio de Lorimar, located deep beneath the lake apparently, uh, it's full of water. Doesn't really uh, do much except limit our choice of frames. Obviously, we wouldn't be able to leave without the uh, waterproof body M. And we wouldn't be able to travel through the sunken uh, corridors. I don't know if we can even change it out. This is our first new enemy. All the enemies in here are new. The Aquatrot, it's equipped with uh, a sucking fan and a pair of harpoons which it shall spike us with. I've got a bad weapon here, the boomerang is not suited for corridors, so let's swap it out. For the sniper arm, and due to weight restrictions I've changed the uh, buzzer arm to the trident arm. The trident arm is actually a very good in this dungeon. Does a lot of damage very quickly. Of course, uh, limiting its use is its durability. If we don't feel like walking back to the entrance to get topped up every so often we're going to have to uh, defeat as many enemies as we can by throwing them. We could have defeated that one by throwing it except it spawned in the worst possible place. A sunken corridor is the worst place for that particular enemy as we could get behind it using boosts while it is using its sucking fan which will be our standard strategy but while we're in the water or we're actually uh, swimming in the sunken section that is, we cannot lift them. There's another couple of enemies that we can't lift in the dungeon. But we'll get onto them soon. Now this initial run through the first three levels left me with uh, very, very few artifacts by the way. Now this is the Hops 800, it's uh, well, it's a bit pathetic. Fires uh, Missiles out in four directions, it seems to like to fire about eight at a time. Their range seems to be limited to the dungeon square that it's in. Even if it appears in a large open room, it'll uh, they'll explode once it reaches the edge of the square. They also home in slightly and ignore the boss, we're, we're coming back for you later. This being the uh, first level, enemies don't have a lot of health and it's quite small. Here we have our next enemy. I believe there's only actually, uh, well, five enemies, including the uh, two sorts of bosses in this dungeon. That was the uh, Strider Skipper. I forget. Stood up, skip up on screen a minute ago. I didn't bother to read it. Oh well. They uh, fly around on top of the water and uh, attack you. Oh, Emerald. You want that? by uh, firing mines. We'll see a bit more of that later. Anyway, we want to uh, acquire 21 things this time. 16 artifacts, 4 sorts of gem, and uh, the plate. You know, that, that 16th artifact uh, screwed me up a bit. I thought, yes, I've finally got the plate, but no. No, it was another artifact. Time to go through the dungeon one last time. Oh, there's one of those mines. Yeah, that, that's an enemy that can't attack you directly. Uh, in the dungeon, I'd say that, uh, well, this boss here, the Octotrot, is the uh, most dangerous one we, we've faced so far. If we observe, it jumps up into the air and sort of homes in on you, and uh, you can't get out of the damage there. If you're not equipped with a ranged weapon that can uh, knock it out of its attack pattern, it's going to land on your head and do damage. Sometimes it will sort of whiff and do that, but hmm, 
Also quite adept at getting out of the way of your melee attacks. It is a complete pain to fight and we're going to be fighting a lot of them. However, there is a quick way to deal with them, a quick and safe way. Of course he's gone into the watery corridor. But this is in fact uh, one of the few it few boss enemies in the game that you can actually pick up. Probably goes far to say that it's uh, the only Trotmobile monster boss in any of the dungeons you can actually lift. And once you've picked it up and got yourself to a wall, that's basically it. The best way to pick them up is to uh, fire upon them when they uh, do the little animation they do just before they jump in the air. It knocks them out of their attack and leaves them vulnerable for a few uh, measly seconds. Basically use a sniper arm and hit them up every time they try and attack you and eventually you'll back them into a corner and be able to pick them up. The sniper arm is uh, very necessary for this dungeon, makes it a lot easier. But as ever your weapon durability and ammo in the case of the sniper arm is paramount. The striders, sorry skippers, and uh, the hops 8000, those are two enemies that you cannot pick up and necessitate the use of the uh, trident arm or the sniper arm as you take them down. But they're both uh, fairly ineffectual with uh, little health. It's the aquatrots which are the main problem as uh, they're the only uh, non-boss enemy that you can throw. Their uh, sucking thing is quite irritating. <clears throat> as long as you're on the ball you shouldn't ever be hit by it, but it does cause aggravation. They do like to spawn in these tight corridors where you can't get around behind them very well. As long as you choose the right direction to turn in, you should be able to get behind them in a corridor though, unless it's a sunken one. In which case you're out of luck and you're going to have to waste your durability on smash them in the face with a trident. Yeah, the skipper, there we are. Skippers are completely non-threatening and really I could, uh, if you felt like it, you could just ignore them. I never ignore enemies though. They drop a measly 40 ur, so uh, hmm. they can get in the way a bit with other things around. One of the most annoying things about this dungeon is, well, in fact it's full of water. This makes the chests even harder to spot than usual. Especially in the uh, near distance there'll be a sort of watery filter over them. So the uh, water effects in this game are quite nice. I'm actually surprised they managed to uh, get this quality of water throughout an entire dungeon. Seems like the sort of thing that would slow the game to a crawl. As ever, the uh, rocks and things you can pick up are very uh, useful. Just quickly uh, damaging enemies, getting their health down a bit, saving your weapons. Nothing here. Now this is the uh, second level of course, or second level, the third dungeon. Enemies still aren't at their strongest. Hops never really get a lot of ammo, a lot of health even. My favourite method of dealing with the uh, level 3 uh, hops is to uh, plink at them uh, three or two or three times with the uh, sniper arm and then uh, jump in with a aerial trident attack to the floor. This means as soon as you hit the floor they should be exploding, which means no unexpected missiles to the face. The sniper arm is a... Uh, as we're mainly using it to uh, disable the boss rather than take off his health. You'll very actually very very rarely run out of ammo using it in a, such an efficient manner. As uh, with the first level, the second uh, level's boss will be the Octotrot once again, and the third and the final level will have a harder, well I say harder, will have a bigger boss. 
Well, you can see the Octotrot in the distance there. Skittering around. Very easy to spot because of their eight eyes. Now, the thing with the Trident Arm is once you uh, start its combo, its sort of pumping animation, it's very hard to tell how to stop it. In an ideal world, I'd uh, be doing one or two hits and then finishing off weaker enemies with a charge attack. But it seems uh, once you do two hits with the trident in quick succession, it starts the pumping animation. Thankfully, I don't think the durability is affected you know, on additional pumps after the enemy's dead. You see, I weakened that one a bit with the sniper arm before finishing it off best to do that from, uh, you know, the corridor where the missiles can't hit you. Did I mention those missiles home in a bit? Because they do. Uh, while I was playing this uh, particular dungeon, I sort of said wondering if uh, the uh, non-attacking boost charge thing, where you release the controls and just press the boost button, was faster than the uh, moving forward attacky one. The answer is, I don't know certainly more difficult to pull off and harder to uh, control yourself if you're not doing the boost attack all the time. I don't think it actually makes any difference at all. You might as well just be able to change your direction easily. If you've uh, let go of the control sticks completely in order to not do the charging attack, whenever you touch them you're going to start uh, spinning wildly. When you got them pushed forward, you can uh, make adjustments very uh, quickly and easily. Are we finally up to the boss? But usually, I don't worry. Oh, an emerald again. Usually, I don't worry too much about the. Uh, see if we can get this quickly. Oh no! There we go. I don't worry too much about beating. Wow, that went very quickly indeed. I don't worry too much about beating the dungeon boss last because, uh, well, as we'll see later, it's nice to be able to get a top up before you leave anyway. If you uh, exit out with hardly any fuel and hardly any health, you're going to run into problems because you're across the entire lake. Well, I say the entire lake. You gotta go all the way back to uh, Mem Village. Is it Mem? I know it's not Meme, but it feels like it should be. Before you uh, can find a save point, as you can't save at the uh, mechanics in the dungeon, unfortunately. Pretty much between every uh, dungeon visit, during my actual dungeon grinding, I went all the way back to uh, save. You probably wouldn't need to do that on a uh, you know, if you're playing yourself, you probably do each dunk the uh, third level about three or four times, then go back and save, and go back. It's not necessary to go back every time, but I'm playing on a PlayStation 2 that, you know, occasionally likes to turn itself off. You know, one, once in a while it'll do that. But I thought it'd be a good idea just to go and save. But one time it did turn itself off exactly after I saved the game, which was a little bit hairy. Could have uh, corrupted my save there. Hooray! Another artifact. One of two that we acquire. Right, we're on to the uh, third level now. The hardest and biggest one. Soon we're going to be up against the actual dungeon boss of the third level. The boss's boss, if you were. The real boss. The Octotrot is uh, more of a sub boss in this case. There it is, the Royale. Look at all those health bars, Jesus Christ. Now, if you are a stupid person like me, you'll use up all your weapons uh, killing that thing, and it will take ages. Don't be a stupid person like me. Be a clever person like Carol Vorderman or something. Anyway, as you can see, the Royale is uh, sort of 
well it's very hard to see how dark it is but it's uh, basically a boat with sort of duck flippers and it goes around and attacks you by dropping explosive, explosive barrels you can set these barrels off yourself but they won't actually hurt you they will hurt you if you stand near them and they explode naturally though now you may be thinking uh, that there's a very obvious way to damage this boss that I'm completely missing here and you'd be right also the trident arms out of energy so back to punching essentially what you want to do is uh, throw the barrels at the royale before they explode are you in the mindset that this is an attack against you you might not think of this straight away at least that's my excuse I find it's easier to do without locking on you can just quickly uh, turn and uh, lift really as a uh, final bosses go this one's completely pathetic I picked up a barrel before it even uh, turned just as it was turning red there and I still managed to throw it through my entire grinding session I think I was hit by these barrels exactly once and it didn't do a lot of damage it was more of a puzzle boss than everything than anything working out that you can uh, throw the barrels that's uh, all, it, all there is to it so you don't even have to get the uh, barrels that close to it when it explodes and it drops a load of money Anyway, back to the stupid way. I've managed to punch through the last three health bars there. Well, it doesn't take that much longer, probably about twice as long, but... Just take up all your durability. Well, we've beaten the dungeon boss, we haven't explored the full floor, we haven't uh, seen everything there is to see here. Specifically one thing I want to show off. So, back we go. Uh -huh. Yes, the uh, third floor is very large. I don't know if it's bigger than the uh, last two dungeons. I think I took about 15 uh, goes through the uh, third level before I got the plate this time. Had a couple of uh, goes through with uh, finding absolutely nothing at all, which was a bit annoying. Took a bit of a break and came back and got everything I needed in one go though. Yep, yeah. oop. There we go. You pick him up and you slam him into the wall. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't really throw them and get under them like you can with the smaller enemies. They seem to uh, just push you out of the way. They don't seem that threatening, but those uh, aqua trots, if there's uh, two at once, they can really get you. Especially with them hanging around in corridors. You go into a room and start fighting one, and find yourself being sucked into a corridor with the second one, you can turn into a bit of a scrum. Fortunately, only, that only happened about twice during my 15 times, so uh, they're not often uh, placed together. Uh, these uh, little offshoots with nothing in them are very annoying. Randomly generated dungeons, everybody. So you may have noticed we've uh, been picking up those uh, spoiled fish, along with the rotten meat. Guess they felt the need to include a third useless rotten item because, uh, well, bread really wouldn't preserve very well in submerged chests, now would it? You see, just after I said you couldn't do that, I have a video proof of myself doing that. Okay, well it seems trickier than uh, other enemies at least. As you can see, uh, the uh, missiles explode after a certain radius. Which is a very good thing. Renders those, uh, those things fairly uh, harmless, honestly. I mean, with the sniper arm or any ranged weapon really you can just stand out of range and fling him to death 
Knight's Armor, hooray! Honestly, this dungeon isn't any more difficult than uh, the mine was. In fact, I'd probably say the mine overall had more difficult enemies. The uh, Those drill robots could really catch you by surprise, do a lot of damage to you. But really, there's only one enemy that actually attacks you directly. These are the boss is the uh, Aquatrots. It's fairly easy to avoid their very close range attacks despite their sucking animation. Let's get a quick top up here as we're near the entrance. Yeah, but those drill robots in the previous dungeons, if you uh, weren't careful, they could really, really do a lot of damage to you. The Triclopses, as ever, were dangerous as hell and had a lot of health and couldn't be thrown. The Scarabs, they did a fair amount of damage and annoying grabbing attack, so they could be a problem. But really, the Skipper and, and the Hops here, they're just complete non-entities, really. Once you know how to deal with the Octotrots, they're uh, not too much of a problem. And hopefully you should never be at low enough health that a single slip up against them would uh, cause you problems. Also, look! There's an Octotrots. There's an Octotrots. In this uh, final dungeon, the uh, last level, in fact, gets two mid bosses. If you hadn't worked out you can uh, grab these guys, this would be the living embodiment of hell right now. Yeah, I'm ashamed to say I died once during this entire process. Well, this was during my initial first run of the dungeon before I started recording. And it was in fact to an Octotrot. Sort of lost that recording though, so I can't show it off. This was before I knew how to deal with them, of course. There we go. Pick him up. Smash him around. Still trying to make him land on me. I did it once, I know it can happen. Probably need to actually uh, pick up and throw though, you know, jump before. Hmm. Honestly, just hitting up against the wall is quicker in this case. If you do uh, five smashes and finish with a throw, that's probably the quickest way. You see, the Ultra Trot's main problem is that they keep advancing backwards most of the time. I'm not sure why. Sometimes they just run into you though. Which makes them very easy to pick up and do this. Hooray! I think we've basically covered most of the dungeon now. So, a very uh, high gem count in this dungeon. Though I'd say most of it, we missed the entire middle section out. Still, it wouldn't be a dungeon video without, you know, slowly moving through uh, previously explored areas to uncover the whole entire map. It was certainly worth it too as I uh, probably didn't even find any chests. Yeah, as I was saying, I've ended up with uh, quite a lot of gems at the end of this. Well, I've got of the four different types, I believe there's uh, the the Periots, the uh, Emerald, I probably said Periot wrong because I'm an idiot. Uh, the ruby and the moonstone. I got one moonstone, I think I got something like five emeralds and six uh, periots. Periots, periots. Reread read how that's spelled before I try and say it. Yeah, another annoyance is uh, these water sections here will destroy anything you've got in your hand while you uh, while you enter them. You can't jump over them. I've tried. So that room back there with uh, nothing in it except for a big rock, you can't even pick up the big rock, take it out and smash something with it. Rendering that room completely pointless. So we're done here now, let's uh, head back. All the way back. Back to the beginning. So you may look at our meagre spoils and despair. 
Definitely want to get refueled here. Ooh, we're getting close to uh, 30 grand right now. It's a lot of uh. It's a particularly uh, profitable dungeon, really. So once you uh, visit the dungeon once, the uh, skippers actually start appearing on the uh, on the lake itself. They're just as ineffectual out here and have the uh, level of health from the first level of the dungeon, so... You know, in the end I mostly ignored them. Wait, right, I've learned how to speed video up correctly now, hooray! There we go. Right, let's uh, head back up here. I really like that noise, it just really demonstrates that that, that jetty was not designed for giant robots to walk on it. Maybe you shouldn't walk on it. Anyway, let's have a quick look at our items here. Give them a bit of a rearrange beforehand though. As I wake up, there we go. You can see we got two of each sort, I'm not even going to try and say periot, pediot. Oh, I'm trying to say it, oh dear. You know, I think Palsy asks in the thread what happens to uh, items you leave in your room when you uh, stop renting it. The answer is they never actually leave your inventory, they just get a tick in the corner and they're greyed out, just like uh, clothing items are when you're wearing them. You know, we only got two, so back we go.
And we're done. We got everything we needed. We got lots of gems. We're gonna make a, a hell of a lot of money when we uh, return to Fort Raven at the Delosia Emporium. Let's have a quick look through. I need to rearrange as uh, before. Yep, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Twelve sorts of gem. Hooray! We've got six of the two green ones. Three rubies. We've got lots of gems. And down here we've got lots of artifacts after. Yeah, there we go. Get all these artifacts. It's very worth noting, even though I've got a bunch of items, we're not even halfway through the inventory list here. There we go, that's uh that's a lot of stuff. The mathematician's crown is my personal favourite artifact this time. Anyway, let's have a look at the uh plates here and there we go we got the first the Fenruins plate the Lorimar plate and the Eurydica plate proof if proof be need be we never need to enter a dungeon again on this save file hooray that, that uh, side quest is as good as done now except for all the fossil grinding have a quick look at dungeon record. Simply tells you how many times you went in a dungeon and how many uh, times you beat the boss of the dungeon. Not terribly enlightening, but that's it for today. I shall see you on the flippity flop. Bye bye now.